Welcome to First Person Defender, where good guy role players come face to face with unknown attackers in real world scenarios. Oh, please. Stop right here. Stop right here. And fight their way out. Get down on the ground! You're about to set my daughter on fire. There's no way I was going to let that happen. <laughs> Get away from her! Get away from her now! You got me in the shoulder, right through center mass of what I was giving you. This force-on-force -force training uses simunitions, a non-lethal alternative for live ammunition, backed up with live fire training on the range. From home invasions... Hey, get out of my house! ...active killers and multiple hey, attackers. Speed kills. Sometimes it's fast speed, sometimes it's slow speed. Each episode of First Person Defender features a situation straight out of real life. Get in the damn car! This could happen to anyone. What are you doing? This is First Person Defender. On this episode of First Person Defender, an all too common story from the news. A young woman jogging alone on a trail is approached, and it doesn't take long for it to go badly. I am Elise Hendricks. I live in Houston, Texas. I've been married 14 years this November. I work as a freelance makeup artist, and that means I'm by myself. I just got myself a uh, Walther PK 380 and hope to get my concealed carry pretty soon. The last time I went to shoot was probably about six months ago. My brother organizes some fun shoots for us. Have to determine which ones are too big for me to shoot because I you know, only weigh about five pounds. I'm aware of my size. I mean, in my head, I'm like a T-Rex and like super intimidating and people are terrified of me, but I'm, you know, realistic. I realize not everybody sees me the way that I see myself. No, people are terrified of me. What are you, are you kidding? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I know I need the protection. I know I want the protection. I feel like I would make mistakes. I'm, I'm definitely cautious. As a small person, as any size person, uh, the, the challenge of security, whether you're large or you're small, really is kind of superfluous because some pretty dynamic things can come in small packages. Particularly when we start talking about concealed carry, you've got uh, some issues on, on how and your modes of carry. And, and I think that's something that people need to be really cognizant of. You know, how are they carrying and, and is it the most practical for the activity that they're participating in? Because Elise is a jogger, today Today's scenario takes place on a jogging trail in the woods. Elise will be jogging alone. While Elise is getting ready to jog, our perpetrator will be hiding around a corner and plans to move in on Elise as she passes by. Whenever I do go run, I go run through the trails by myself usually and can't convince anybody else to go out there with me and probably should have more concerns <laughs> than I do. Elise had indicated early on that she ordinarily runs with music. We had her wear earbuds and on top of that with the simunitions, the FX uh, safety equipment, her hearing as well as her sight was pretty well impaired. This is exactly what I wear when I go jogging. Just the helmet and everything. In case I fall. You know, she's got a good mindset and she's very headstrong and she's, you know, uh, got a lot of uh, kind of a, an aggressive personality, but kind of a minimal amount of familiarity with the whole idea behind self defense with a firearm. And we've got uh, a, lot, a lot of lack of familiarity as far as the modes of carry. Kind of curious to see what's going to happen when the scenario plays itself out. I'm really not sure. Crew members in yellow shirts are considered to be invisible. Left side, left side. Hey, honey, what you doing? Hey, jogging. Hey, no, stop right here, stop right here. What you doing? Just jogging, dude. I uh, don't. Nozzler defense ammunition is loaded up front with the bonded performance line of bonded core defense bullets. Professionals trust their next move to Nozzler defense. When the bond between hand and gun feels as true as a perfectly placed shot, it's not by accident, it's by design. M&P, advanced by design. First Person Defender is brought to you by 
Crimson Trace, Blackhawk, Remington, and Simunition. Elise is a jogger and considers herself to be fairly streetwise. She's running down a trail in the woods when an attacker stops her. Hey, honey. What you doing? Hey, jogging. Hey, no, stop right here. Stop right here. What you doing? Just jogging, dude. Did we go to school together? No, man, I don't know. Oh, where'd you go to school? You, you, you were born in Louisiana, weren't you? No, nah, dude. No, I'm telling you, we know each other. No, nah, I don't. All right, index, index, index. It's hard to breathe in that thing. First time that I ran through <gasps> the scenario, whenever I saw the first person run out the side and just keep going, and I didn't see the next person until they were almost right in front of me. Hey, honey, what you doing? Hey, jogging. Hey, no, stop right here, stop right here. And then by the time they got in front of me, it happened so quick. No, I'm telling you, we know each other. No, I don't. All right, index, index, index. I think I was hesitant to go for a gun. Like I can maybe get out of it in another way or just like, I, I don't know. I don't and know. so when he comes out and he, he's, he's running alongside you and then he gets in front of you and he actually tries to physically pushes you back, mm -hmm. you didn't feel threatened under those circumstances? No, I felt threatened. That's why I was a little hesitant to grab my gun. Like maybe I could still get around it until he actually physically grabbed me. That was when I actually felt a real threat. The scenario had the bad guy close the distance and, and make physical contact with Elise. What I wanted was Elise to get contact distance from our target and actually force the target away from her and at the same time creating distance. What I saw, what I was what I was experiencing out there was kind of a, a I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to do. Uh, she kind of just moved around kind of casually and not a lot of aggression on her part. As encumbering as these helmets are, the one thing that it does actually uh, kind of show you is when you start going through sensory deprivation or you start going through all the different responses of the sympathetic nervous system, yeah. tunnel vision, things on those lines, you do you do have this kind of restriction. It's uncomfortable because these do end up fogging up on you, mm -hmm. but it, it does give you that kind of sensation where you can't see or you can't hear things. So, which is really what actually transpires in a real world situation. Yeah. Now what happened in your scenario is you had a bad guy come out and start running alongside you. And at some point, because you were ignoring him or you didn't hear him or whatever the case may be, maybe you were disconnected from the in world with your head. earmuffs, right, you're off in the zone someplace, he gets in front of you, okay? Now the reality is the minute that he gets in front of you, that's an aggressive act. Mm -hmm. When he lays hands on you, that's taking that aggressive act into that next level. And at that point, you need to start thinking about protecting yourself. You need to start thinking about the, tactic, the tactics and the techniques you need to employ to keep him away from you. So what I want you to work on is, we're gonna be up here on our target. And you're gonna be contact distance on your target, right up here, bad breath distance. Okay. And what I want you to do is push him off of you. You're already now at arm's length. You, you're athletically inclined, so bring that athleticism into play, create some distance, at the same time, accessing that weapon and bringing it up to play. Okay. All right, so get up here and get on top of your target. Okay, your hands are down by your side, because you, you're running. He gets up on top of you, push him off, create distance, exactly. Okay, right. now let's take it one more step, push off him, and I want you to access that weapon all the way. Okay, all so right. you're gonna be doing a bunch of things at the same time. You gotta clear that shirt and get it away from that gun so it's not drawing into the shirt. You want that gun out. Okay, what's gonna happen is, if you don't clear the shirt, you're gonna draw into it, you're gonna present the shirt and the gun at the same time, okay? Or you're gonna force the gun out of your hand mm -hmm. and the gun's gonna be on the ground. Human beings walk on a plane that's about six to eight inches wide. Our feet wanna go underneath us. It's important when you widen yourself out, you wanna try and get that shoulder width stance so you're not yeah. doing this. Plus, if he stays on top of you, your force against his force. Now you have less mass than he does, you have less muscle mass, so he's already got an advantage on you but you wanna be able to take your body mass, control that weapon, but take your own body mass, if you had to, against his body mass. Does that make push, sense? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, you ever had to push a car that ran out of gas? Yes. You push that car like this, or do you push that car like this? Down low and wide, yeah. Exactly the same way. All right, so let's do it one more time. Snap, go. Excellent, all right, go. All right, very good. Elise now runs the same drill okay. using simunition rounds. Go. All right, very good, very good. Let's do it one more time. Go. All 
All right, very good, very good. A self-defense situation is a life or death situation. That's a high aggression situation. You've gotta get your head in the game, get aggressive. You're there to keep yourself from getting killed. You, you wanna make sure that you take appropriate actions and you, you do it with purpose. Hey, hey, how's it going? How's it going? Hey, girl. Hey. Innovation and forward thinking often lead to greatness. And when you believe in what you make, the comfort, quality, and reliability of Crossbreed become a part of you. Carry concealed. Carry comfortably. Carry the cross. With your handgun and the training to back it up, a laser gives you the ultimate advantage. This is Condition Crimson, and in Condition Crimson, we stand. Learn more at ConditionCrimson.com. For more than 100 years, the Model 1911 has been by our side through it all. And proudly, it's once again a Remington, America's favorite pistol design by America's most trusted gun maker. First Person Defender is brought to you by Springfield Armory, Nosler, and Smith & Wesson. When we started doing the uh, the train up, we were using simunitions. We used that as an opportunity to work a lot more close quarters on the target. What I wanted was a leash to get contact distance from our target and actually force the target away from her, and at the same time, creating distance. In the second scenario, what we had set up, something very similar to the first scenario, only we brought two role players that were bad guys. And one was there to draw attention. Our primary bad guy was to come up from a blind side and make the physical contact with Elise. I'm trying to get myself into more of a serious mode. After all the training and everything, I just need to kind of, I don't know, get myself into a serious mode. Hey, girl. Hey, hey, how's it going? How's it going? How's it going? It's all right. Good. Hey, girl. What you doing? Running. What, what you, you doing? doing? Where you going? Where you going? It's all right. I'm here. What you doing? What you got a gun? Index. What happened in the second scenario is not what we planned to happen in the second scenario. She still didn't take any affirmative action against them. I saw both people this time, but I was expecting this one and I got that one, so still unexpected. I first started to go to my weapon when I first saw the guy in front of me. And then that was when it came in from the side. But I was trying to create distance. It was like backing into the bushes at that point. Then I went for my weapon. I got my weapon out, but he was already on top of me. When I saw him pull the gun out, my immediate reaction was just to uh, to fire. Index. All of that happened a lot faster than I really expected. I honestly didn't feel it. And I'm assuming you can understand right now how you get swept up with these situations and they go Absolutely. south on you really, really quick. Absolutely. I've got some concerns. One, rather than creating distance, we didn't really create distance. We kind of just kind of moved back and forth. And then on top of that, how many times has somebody got to lay hands on you for you, you, you take some kind of action? Yeah, <laughs> that's a problem. When he did present his weapon, the two of you stood there at a Mexican standoff holding your guns at each other. What looked like was a uh, was a scene of a Tarantino movie is what it looked like. He was on top of you, mm -hmm. and you actually came out and you, you were like trying to keep the gun away from him. Under those circumstances, he's laid hands on you several times. That's why creating that proximity, get that distance off, boom, get him away from you. Kick groins, mm -hmm. gouge eyes, get away from me, help, 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 whatever, if you don't want to go to your gun. Yeah, I don't think that I ever coming into this knew, you know, enough to say, oh, I can totally defend myself. I'm gonna be good to go with a concealed license. It's all I need. Absolutely not. I should be more cautious in scenarios like that. I should be more aggressive. I definitely see that I need more training. In our everyday lives, we need to be paying attention to not just what we expect to see in a set of circumstances, but the unexpected. If she's going to take self-defense seriously, then that's a game that she needs to get into and, and spend some time with a real quality instructor. Get more training and get more experience.